This video is about counting principles and some probability skills um, you may or may not have used. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the fundamental counting principle. And here's what it says. It says you have two events. The first event can happen X number of ways. The second event can happen Y number of ways. The number of ways that the two events can occur is X times Y. So there's multiple ways they can occur as a pair. So that's the basic rule. How does that play out? Well, let me show you. Okay, number one here. How many different pairs of letters from the English alphabet are possible? So there's different two events. There's one letter, then the second letter. That's two different events. In the English al alphabet, there's 26 letters, right? So the first letter could be chosen out of 26 possibilities. The second letter can be chosen out of 26 possibilities. It does not say that you cannot repeat a letter just says out of the English alphabet. So in order to find the probability of, or not really the probability, in order to find out how many different pairs there are, in order to find different pairs, you would take 26 times 20, and when you do that, you get 676, and that's the possible different pairs of letters. If you spend all day pairing them up, that's how many you would get. All right, let's try another one. Telephone numbers in the U.S. currently have 10 digits. The first three are the area code. The next seven are local telephone numbers. How many different telephone numbers are possible within each area code? Okay, so telephone numbers, seven digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Note that at this time, a local telephone number cannot begin with a zero or a one. So let's think about the number of digits. If you go from zero to nine, there's 10 digits, right? So, um, there's 10 digits possible. Can numbers repeat? Sure, we know that numbers can repeat in, in, let, in phone numbers. But it gives us this one criteria. It says 0 or 1 cannot be the beginning number. So that means I don't have 10 digits for this first pl place. I have only 8. Every digit after that could be 1 of 10, right? So it's just a matter of multiplication. You would multiply all of these out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 10 to the 6 times 8, and that's 8 million phone numbers possible within each area code. Notice I d the, the three area code digits, I didn't mess with those because we don't need to worry about that. It says within each area code. So that would be my answer, how many different possible phone numbers there are. All right, then there's something called combinations. Okay, and the number of combinations of n elements taken r at a time, basically it's groupings. If you, have, if you have like a group with so many and you need to take so many at a time, how many possible ways can you get that group? All right, so here's the formula you're going to follow. It says n, n c r, that's n total ways r things at a time. It's a combination, that's what the c stands for. So you take an n factorial, divided it by n minus r factorial times r factorial. All right, so here's how it looks. In how many different ways can three letters be chosen from the letters A, B, C, D, E? So this is my N. So N is five. I have five choices, and I need to take three at a time. The order is not important, and that's when you can use this combination rule. So the five factorial over N minus R, well, that's five minus three. That's a two, so two factorial times three factorial, all right? And then spell out your factorials. And cancel like terms. 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 times 1, 3 to 1. Multiply it out, you get 20 over 2, which is 10. So there's 10 different ways you can group three letters out of A, B, C, D, and E. Okay? 10 different ways to do that. So this is a grouping and where the order is not important. Okay, so we're going to try another example of a combination. It says a standard poker hand consists of five cards, that's important, five cards dealt from a, pos a deck of 52 cards. Okay, how many different poker hands are possible? After the cards are dealt, the player may reorder them so the order is not important. Why does that matter? If order is important, then we would go back to the fundamental counting principle. But since order is not important, we use the combination. So, remember the equation looks like this n minus r factorial times r factorial. So we need to identify. Well, n is the total number of cards in the deck. That's 52. r is 5. 5 cards in one hand. I'm sorry, this should be 
in factorial on top. So I have 52 factorial over 52 minus 5, which is 47 factorial times 5 factorial. All right. Now, before you freak out, count this down. 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47 factorial. Stop there because on the bottom you have 47 factorial, right? Times 5 factorial. Times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Now, why did I do that? Well, because 47 factorial will cancel with 47 factorial. All right, we know that. And these numbers can help us reduce these other ones. Um, you could type it in the calculator just like this, or you can do some simple uh, reduction. Okay. 5 goes into 50 with 10 left over. 4 times 2 is, is 8. Times 3 is 24. 24 goes into 48 two times. So really all I have to type in the calculator is 52 times 51 times 10 times 49 times 2. And then I will find out that I can have Two million five hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred sixty different poker hands from one single book. All right, so that's the way the combinations will work. All right, you try this one for class. You're forming a twelve-member swim team out of twenty girls. How many different groups are possible? Try this one, and we'll see you in class.